Okay, let's begin our discussion about inclusion eye cell disease. It's also known as eye cell disease or inclusion cell disease. And it's also known by a few different names, like a mucolipidosis type 2, or it could be categorized under a lysosome storage disease subtype. So we're dealing with a lysosome storage disorder. So the lysosome is going to be an area in the cell where stuff is broken down. That's as basic as we can go. But we've also got another organelle where the mutation is, which is going to cause this disease. So uh, we're going to start out by talking about the Golgi apparatus. The Golgi apparatus, apparatus is kind of like the postmaster, the post office of the cell. So what the Golgi is going to do is it's going to uh, modify stuff and send stuff out that's created by the rough endoplasmic reticulum and send it to destinations within the cell. So it's going to receive the mail from the, the uh, rough ER and then it's going to distribute it out to areas of the cell. And it may modify it along the way. However, when you see Golgi apparatus, you want to think like post office. It's going to be the mail carrier that's going to send stuff to destinations. It's going to spread stuff out within the cell. So, one of the functions is going to be transfer phosphotransferase activity. Phosphotransferase activity. And what this is going to do, add, add mannose 6-phosphate. It's going to add a mannose 6-phosphate. Now note that mannose is going to be a 6-carbon sugar. And it's going to add it to lysosome, lysosome proteins. Now, why are we using this phosphotransferase activity to add this six carbon sugar uh, to a lysosome protein? Remember, these are made in the rough ER, like I said. Why are we adding this mannose six phosphate to a lysosome protein? We want to have this be like the address. This molecule right here attached to a protein will, will send its destination towards a lysosome. And remember, lysosomes are going to be within the cell. They break down stuff. So we're, we're targeting all these ends, these proteins that are made for the lysosome, which will help the lysosome break down material, break down waste within the cell. And this right here is the marker for it the mannose 6-phosphate will give the proteins their lysosome destination, the post office, their destination. All right, so uh, what, what is wrong in inclusion cell disease? Well, this phosphotransferase is deficient. We have a mutation that knocks out this phosphotransferase. What that does is we no longer have mannose 6-phosphate attached to these proteins. We're still making the proteins, so that's not, that's not the issue. A rough ER isn't the problem. We have a Golgi apparatus problem where we lose this phosphotransferase activity. We lose our mannose 6-phosphate activity. So we have all these lysosomes, but they don't know where to go. So instead of getting released to lysosomes, these lysosomal proteins get released into the cell. And uh, they kind of haphazardly get released into the cell. So what happens is we still have we still have our lysosomes, but they don't have the correct proteins. They no longer have the proteins required to break down material. So when material, let's say this is this is a dead dead lipid, um, and we want to degrade it within the body. Uh, you can also degrade carbohydrates as well. But let's talk about this lipid. This lipid enters the lysosome. So now we're in the lysosome. Let's say a carbohydrate also comes in. A carbohydrate comes in. So we have a carbohydrate and a lipid within our lysosome. They need to be degraded. But we can't because we don't have the correct enzymes. So they're going to form these inclusions. They're going to be inclusion bodies. That's why we get inclusion cell disease. We have inclusions within our lysosome. And that's, that's kind of the basics of the disease. 
It's where our body gets inclusion cells. And these are going to be lysosomes that cannot break down this material, this debris, cellular debris, um, and really it's insustainable to life. So uh, I'd like to note that uh, inclusion cell disease is going to be thought to be an autosomal recessive disorder, meaning you need two recessive alleles. Just having one of those alleles for the mutation uh, is not going to give you the disease. And then also, uh, some of the symptoms of inclusion cell disease are going to be hepatosplenomegaly. You're going to have an enlargement of your liver and your spleen. It's also going to be incompatible with life. Uh, you'll have developmental defects. You'll have failure to thrive. You'll also have coarse facial features. Uh, typically, infants who have this inclusion cell disease mutation uh, will not survive very long. Uh, also, you may have joint issues, uh, a few other, few other disease, but mostly developmental delays. You'll see uh, organ enlargement, and then eventually death. So this is inclusion cell disease. If you have any questions, be sure to ask, be sure to comment, be sure to like, be sure to subscribe. Thank you very much.